Base government on what actually does work and is working in the inner city schools, on the farms, and so forth. Harry Brown, candidate of the Libertarian Party. Good evening. Thanks so much for having me here, Larry. We've had 60 years of government programs from uh, coming out to us from Washington and nothing works. The education system has been decimated. Our health care system is a mess after 30 years of government interference. Social Security is about to go bankrupt. Uh, Medicare is about to go bankrupt. And tonight we saw on the stage two po lifetime politicians talking about all the new government programs that they're going to put in place to make things better for us. The fact of the matter is that government doesn't work. It doesn't deliver the mail on time. It doesn't educate our children properly. It doesn't keep the city safe and tonight what has been left out of all the discussion are the poor people out across America who are paying for all these government programs that are absolute failures. The family that can't afford braces for their children's teeth or can't afford to put their children through college because they're paying such high taxes for education programs, for health care programs, for housing programs that don't work. What we have to do is not to reform government, not to find somebody that can better able to manage it, but to reduce it to the absolute minimum possible. And only the Libertarian Party believes in individual liberty, personal responsibility, and freedom from government across the board on all issues at all times. You will never hear me propose a new government law to solve some social problem because it is government laws that are drowning us today and we have to get rid of as many of them as we can. Howard Phillips, the presidential candidate of the U.S. Taxpayers Party. Larry, thank you for having us on again and my regards to my colleagues. The U.S. Taxpayers Party is the party of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Those who wrote the Declaration acknowledged that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Our rights are a gift from God. The duty of civil government is to safeguard those God-given rights. In the Declaration, they asserted that government derives its just powers from the consent of the governed. That is because each of us, as God's creatures, has a duty of stewardship to God's sovereignty. Law is the will of the sovereign. For most of our history, it was recognized that God is the great lawgiver. That was reflected in the common law of the states. The federal government had no right to interfere with the people of Colorado when they passed Proposition 2, prohibiting special rights for homosexuals. The, the federal government had no right to interfere with the people of California when they passed Proposition 187, regulating the degree to which they might be obliged to subsidize uh, people who had come into the country illegally. The federal government had no right to interfere with the states when they sought to impose the death penalty on people who had committed, for example, premeditated murder. We need to go back to that system, and we need to recognize that a core element of that system is the principle of accountability. The first sentence in the Constitution, in Article I, Section 1, right after the preamble, says all legislative powers shall be vested in a Congress of the United States. The reason for that is that the framers wanted us to be able to hold public policy accountable through elected officials. We've departed from that. Other entities have been able to set policy at home and abroad. We need to restore okay. the American Constitution. All right, the gentleman over there has a question. We'll start with him. Yes, my name is David Quillian. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta, and I have a question for Harry Brown about Social Security. We all know that Social Security is headed for disaster. Dole and Clinton are both so scared of the problem that they are going to defer it to a commission to be resolved. I would like to know whether you think the system is worth saving at all, and if so, would you agree with privatizing the system in effort to salvage it for future generations? And the other two gentlemen can come in quickly after Mr. Brown okay. answers. We don't need a commission to save Social Security. What we need to do is to get the federal government out of it once and for all. You have no... So po politicians are incapable of leaving money lying around on the table and not scooping it up and spending it for their own interests. The way I want to get rid of it is to sell off all federal assets that serve no constitutional purpose. The pipelines, the power companies, the unused military bases. Use this money to liquidate the system by buying private lifetime annuities for everyone who's dependent on Social Security today, then the rest of us will be free forever from that 15% Social Security tax, and we will never again have to worry about the politicians controlling our retirement. John? Social Security can be salvaged with less radical steps. The 7.5% that we take home that gets taken out of our paycheck 
we should be left to invest ourselves for our future in good investments. The other 7.5% that our employees take out, they can take that out. The government can invest that, but it should be invested in the private sector. And A-rated bonds are higher so that the real social security pool of money that grows, that's the money that will provide a social safety net below which people should not go. So there is a role for the <coughs> government in social security, in my opinion, but part of it should be privatized so that we can invest the fruits of our own earnings. Howard? Larry, Bob Dole came to Congress in 1961. In that year, we were paying $13 billion in Social Security taxes. Last year, we paid $473 billion in Social Security taxes as a result of the bipartisan fix which Dole introduced in 1983. The answer to the Social Security problem is not to keep raising our taxes. The Social Security tax is the cruelest tax of all. Ironically, it's a flat tax, but it clobbers everyone. Because of the Social Security tax, if you're a small businessman, and because you face that co-payment responsibility, you're less inclined to hire a young person for a lifetime job. You're more inclined to go to an independent contractor, a temp, a part-time employee, a leased employee. So we, would... we need to privatize Social Security and stop the Social Security tax. We'll get a break and come back. By the way, following this program with our other candidates, Bill Schneider, Ken Bode, and our co-anchors, Judy Woodruff and uh, Bernie Shaw, will return with analysis of this entire evening. We'll be right back. Bob Dole said tonight that he'd like to have another debate with all the candidates. We'd be happy to accommodate them. I'm sure the three gentlemen would appear. I'm sure Ross would appear. We'd ask the president. We'd do another one. Why not? There's no law. Okay, the gentleman. Hi, my question is for Harry Brown. I'm a national park ranger in Atlanta, and I'm concerned about the country's uh, environmental and cultural resources. Can you, can you tell me why the privatization of the park service is in our best interest? Well, the federal government has done a terrible job of keeping uh, re resources pollution-free. Uh, Yellowstone Park, for instance, is an uh, ecological disaster. The problem is that people who do not take care of their own property don't have a vested interest in the future value of that property. And so whenever you buy a house, you always worry about the resale value of the house. But, of course, people who are uh, taking care of somebody else's property are not so concerned. So the government has allowed its lakes and streams to be polluted by toxic waste. It's allowed its lands and parks to be strip mined or clear cut things that a private owner would never do because it would uh, be worried about the resale but value. But we own it. We own Yellowstone. Yes, but, you you're, not out, Yellowstone. but you're not out there managing it. But why, how do you know a private company wouldn't do terrible things with it because just to it, make money? Be, because it has to be concerned about what it's going to get for the property when it turns around to sell it later. Just as you worry about the resale value of your house, you're not going to clear cut the, the uh, trees in your front yard, you're not going to uh, dig up the, the uh, front yard, and you're not going to dump toxic waste in the pond in the backyard. Howard, would that ranger keep his job in a Howard Phillips administration? Well, he might have a different employer. Uh, I would follow the Constitution. And the Constitution says there are only two purposes for which the federal government can own land. One, to establish the seat of government, and two, to provide for the national defense. <coughs> Excuse me, and with respect... But, but, but it's been amended and people have voted no, on things over the years. You no, no, it's been ignored. Never and, been amended? No, sir. Not in that respect. And uh, it can only be done with the consent of the legislature. Right now, uh, they own 90 percent of Alaska. 80 plus percent of Nevada. You would sell off all lands? Well, what I would do is help pay the national debt by selling them back to the states and to the private sector. And uh, you've got uh, hundreds of millions of acres. This was how Jefferson financed much of his administration, and this is how we could do it again. Another thing we could do is uh, uh, provide energy independence for the United States instead of closing off our vast resources and having to go to war in the Middle East so that we can be energy independent. I'd rather open up the land and save the lives of our armed forces. John? I would worry a great deal about our environmental resources without government protections against individual greed and against corporate greed. But there's a lot that our government does wrong. 
For example, our government subsidizes the use of polluting fuels like fossil fuels. We pay, the taxpayers, the cost of 63,000 deaths per year from airborne pollutants, hundreds of thousands falling sick. We pay the environmental costs of the destruction of our lakes through acid rain. We pay the defense costs of keeping that oil pipeline open to the Middle East. If the government would just stop subsidizing fossil fuels and polluting energy sources, already our clean, abundant, renewable energy sources would have a much larger slice of our national energy pie. Our uh, next question from the lady. Yes, my name is Mary Lowry. I'm in Atlanta attending the National Domestic Violence Conference. As you're aware, thousands of women are battered in the United States every day. If you believe that domestic violence is a social issue, does that mean you would not support legislation that would harden or mandate harsher sentences for first-time offenders? And does that mean you not do anything to break the battered women syndrome cycle? Let's start with Howard this time. Well, Let's that is much responsibility. Sure, it is not the responsibility of the federal government. Clearly. It is the responsibility of state and local government to prevent violent assault on any person. And uh, the federal government should get out of the way and stop preventing state and local government uh, from using the uh, powers available to them. Sure, should you have a bully pulpit? What if a government, what if sure, a certain state doesn't have a strong Absolutely, law? absolutely. The President of the United States should lead by example and should be someone to whom the people can look for instruction. They may not agree with him, and uh, he is not there to save souls, but he is there to uphold a standard. John, domestic violence. Well, obviously, one thing we must do is keep guns out of the hands of people who have a tendency or a record of domestic violence. The government has to be proactive in this case to protect our households and spouses from abuse. But another thing the Natural Law Party would do that is more fundamental, we recognize that we're living in an epidemic of stress. Doctors everywhere rep report an alarming rise of stress-related illness, stroke, hypertension, heart disease. This same epidemic of stress is at the basis of a lot of our social diseases, family decay, domestic violence, drug dependency, crime. So the Natural Law Party supports in Medicare, for example, our government health care programs, stress reduction programs that are working to rehabilitate individuals in these unfortunate situations. So we try to tackle the problem at a deeper level. That's what the Natural Law Party is always all about. Harry? Well, crime in America began to escalate when the federal government moved into the picture in the early 1960s. What we have is a proliferation of gun control laws, asset forfeiture laws, all kinds of federal strings on federal subsidies that divert law enforcement from the job of getting the thugs off the street, stopping violence, and instead uh, prosecuting victimless crimes How and so on. How about domestic violence? Well, domestic... The husband who hits the wife. Domestic violence is no different from any other kind of violence. You uh, hit somebody else, you're committing violence. It doesn't matter whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, the man across the streets, uh, your child, you whoever it is, and all, all of those things should be prosecuted. But the federal government influences local governments through subsidies and strings to uh, uh, spend their time chasing victimless crimes or chasing uh, uh, large properties that, in order to get asset forfeiture. And the worst thing the federal government has done is to prosecute this insane war on drugs, which has taken so much law enforcement uh, resources away from the job of keeping thugs from beating up women, men, or anybody else. You would legalize drugs? Absolutely. This has been the biggest disaster in the history of this country. You would not. Absolutely not. Uh, when you legalize something, you get more of it. Before we legalized abortion, there were very few abortions in the United States. Since it was legalized, 35 million babies have been killed. The Natural Law Party is all about harnessing America's most precious national resource, which is our human resource. We can't fully utilize our human resource if we're encouraging or not discouraging drug use. So I would not Right. legalized drugs. As a we'll be right back with candidate. more. By the way, um, tomorrow night, Newt Gingrich will be our guest. We'll be back at our regular time, 9 p.m., and we'll be back in Washington. And Larry Schiller has authored that new book on the Simpson trial that the New York Times called the best book written about that trial. will be with us on Friday. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Larry King Live. We're at the CNN Center in Atlanta, Georgia. What a year they're having in Atlanta. They're going to have a seventh game tomorrow for the National League Championship. Braves and Cardinals. The winner will play the Yankees in the World Series. We're talking with independent candidates, Drs. John Hagelin and Harry Brown and Howard Phillips. Question from the gentleman. David Irvine from Arizona. I have a question for all of them and go back to the school situation. More and more people are concerned about what's being taught and how it's being taught in schools. And that's why we have this argument now with the voucher system. We have homeschooled our kids now. I have two teenagers with me, my sons, and uh, they're not watching MTV for their politics. They're here watching Larry King and the real people. <laughs> but anyway, what, my question is to all of you, how do you get, for example, the school voucher system, it, how do you get the money into the parents' hands to choose where we put our kids. Assuming we'll they agree with you. Okay, start with Dr. Hagelin. That's what vouchers accomplish, and that's why we're for vouchers. It's state money, even federal money, goes to the hands of the parents. They can pick... In, in a voucher. In a voucher. They can pick whatever public school or private school they want to, to send their children to on the basis of that voucher. But it's not the funding of education that concerns me. I'm a teacher. Many of our 700 candidates on the ballot across the country are teachers. It's the substance of education, the content of it. We can do so much better. We must do better. We're in touch with programs that are working to keep kids in school, improve educational outcomes. Financing is only important to the extent that those vouchers will encourage competition, but it's the substance, the content. What, what if 2,000 people in the community all choose the same school? Then the, there'll be extra vouchers and extra people left over to go, to, go to, uh, to another school and raise the standards so at that school. In that school first? That's the free market economy. It okay. works, Larry. Harry? Uh, we had, education started going downhill in America when the federal government moved in, so it goes you, without... You don't like the federal government. Without, go it goes without saying we've got to get the federal government out of it. Uh, but secondly... If we, get the, if we get the federal government not only out of education, but all the other things it's made a mess of, welfare, health care, housing, transportation, crime control, regulation, all of these things, then we don't need an income tax. We can repeal the income tax and replace it with nothing. And what has that got to do with education? It means you can put your child in any school you want because you'll have the resources to do it. You want a private school, a religious school, you want prayer, no prayer, sex education, no sex education. You make the choice with your own money. You won't have to plead with the state for a voucher. You, you don't have, have to money, fight with the school board. You don't have money, no school. If you don't have any money, you'll be no worse off than you are now. But if you repeal the income tax, you're putting a trillion dollars a year back in the economy. That'll buy, buy a job for everybody who can work and charity for everyone who can't work. That's going to buy a lot of scholarships for a lot of poor people who otherwise couldn't send their children <clears throat> to private schools. Howard? Larry, let me first of all congratulate the questioner for homeschooling his kids. I have a bias in that direction. My eldest son, Doug, is an attorney with the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and I'm very, very proud of my wife, Peggy, uh, who homeschools our youngest son, Sam, who's 10 years old. Uh, I believe the key to education is parental responsibility and accountability. He who pays the piper, he who pays the piper calls the tune, and that's why the framers of this great country didn't want the federal government to have any role whatsoever in education. I have a they, had, they had schools, Howard. They had schools, but not federally funded schools. They were locally accountable. When I was director of the U.S. Office of Economic Opportunity, I helped fund one of the first school voucher programs in America. And I was very enthusiastic about that program until the Grove City decision of the Supreme Court in the late 70s, which in effect said that if anything is touched by a federal dollar, the federal government has the authority to run it. I don't want the federal government to governmentalize private education. That's why uh, the whole question should be returned to the state and local level. And at that level, tax credits and deductions are preferable, in my view, to vouchers because they preserve parental accountability and school independence. In the interest of equal time, we're going to spend some more moments with our panel. And then uh, uh, Judy Woodruff and Bernie Shaw and Bill Schneider and Ken Bode will go at it on this whole evening. We'll be back with our remaining moments with our other independent candidates right after this.
Okay, we're back giving equal time to everybody tonight and the lady. Cindy Davi from Abbeville, Louisiana. How do you feel about the D.A.R.E. program in the schools? And how do you support law enforcement officers against fighting drugs? D.A.R.E. is the anti-drug. D.A.R.E. it right. Okay, the education wants to take program that in first. the schools. Yes. Uh, Howard? Well, basically, uh, education should be locally controlled. I'm very concerned about some of the programs which the federal government has been imposing on local education. Goals 2000, outcome-based education, school to work, are tremendous impositions on local control of education. They're trying to impose the views of federal bureaucrats on parents. DARE is local though, isn't it? Isn't well, it a little local? I'm, yeah. but I'm talking generically. It's very, very important that we restore parental accountability. I was shocked to see Bob Dole, who keeps talking about his opposition to the Department of Education, support 60 million more for Goals 2000 before he left the Senate. I was shocked to see the Republicans in the Senate last week support another $4 billion for the Department of Education. What distinguishes the U.S. Taxpayers Party from the Republicans and Democrats is that we believe in the Constitution as our platform, and that makes clear there is no authorized federal role in education. John, there. Dare. We can do better than dare. All of America's problems are human problems. Drug abuse, domestic violence, uh, rising crime and so forth. Government has to uplift, elevate human behavior. Now the way to do this is not through regulation and legislation because you can't have police in every kitchen, every playground, every classroom to be sure we treat each other fairly. Education that keeps kids in school. 70% of our kids drop out of school in our inner city environments. It's the dropouts who are at highest risk for crime, drug abuse, teen pregnancy. So we can do better. Education that expands comprehension, empowers people to make better decisions that will affect their own lives, their environment, and the society in which we live. That's why the Natural Law Party has taken such a strong pro-education policy. DARE is one part of that policy. And Harry, there'd be no DARE with your, under your concept. Right? Well, the amazing thing about the debate tonight was so many times questions were raised and discussed that have nothing to do with the federal government at all. The Constitution does not authorize the federal government to be involved in 48-hour maternity stays at hospitals or anything of this sort. This is not the business of the federal government. Uh, with regard to drug use, the, the problem is that our children are being preyed upon by drug dealers on school grounds. Uh, they're being preyed upon when they walk down the street. And why? Because the federal government has created a black market in drugs that has run up the price of drugs, turned it over to criminals, and made it a criminal enterprise because of the insane war on drugs. We have got to, if we care anything about our civilization, our country, or our children, we have got to end this right. war on drugs before it destroys us. One minute each for a wrap-up. We'll go in reverse of the way we began. Howard, one minute. The U.S. Taxpayers Party, which is the American Independent Party in California, the Right to Life Party in New York, has four primary objectives. We will end legal abortion in the United States. We will cut the federal government down to constitutional size. We will end all direct internal taxation by the federal government on individuals and families. No taxes on income, inheritances, capital gains, social security or business activity. We will restore political accountability withdraw from the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank. I'm proud to have the support of Michael New, the soldier who stood up when he was uh, told to wear the uniform of a foreign government, the United Nations, and was court-martialed for his coverage. I'm proud to have the support of people who want to restore accountability by closing down okay. the Federal Reserve and by eliminating government by executive order. Harry Brown of the Libertarians. Let me ask you a question. If you're getting a farm subsidy or a student loan right now, or maybe you just love the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, would you give up your favorite federal programs if it meant you never had to pay income tax again? Because that's the price of that program. You can't have yours without everybody else getting his. But if we get rid of all of them at once, we can repeal the income tax and replace it with nothing so that every dollar you make is yours to spend, to save, to give away as you see fit. Is that what you want? If it is, vote for it. Don't waste your vote this year. If you want smaller government, there is only one way that it, your vote cannot be misinterpreted, and that's the vote for the Libertarian candidate, Harry Brown. If you vote for Bob Dole or Bill Clinton, somebody else will put the spin on it. Vote for Harry Brown. If you want smaller government this year, vote for freedom. Don't waste your vote. Dr. John Hagelin, Natural Law Party. We've heard a lot in this campaign about problems, but we have not heard a great deal about solutions. There are simple, 
common sense, forward-looking solutions to literally all the problems we face as a nation. Every precious vote for the Natural Law Party is a vote for the environment, agricultural policies that don't erode the soil base, don't poison the foods and water supply, for ending our energy dependence on foreign oil by developing our clean, abundant, renewable energy resources and our fight against crime, taking advantage of the fact that prevention is five times as cost-effective as punishment as a deterrent to crime, economic growth through a low flat tax that drops to 10 percent by 2002 with a budget that is balanced by 1999 funded by cost-effective solutions to costly social problems. These are the sorts of solutions and others that you will support if you support me on November 5th. I thank you kindly for that support. This has been a special edition of Larry King Live featuring the um, candidates you didn't get to see in the uh, main debates that were held uh, earlier tonight and in the past two weeks. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night at our regular time in Washington, 9 o'clock, with uh, Newt Gingrich. We thank them all. I also want to especially thank the entire crew here in Atlanta, our visiting crew from Washington, and this wonderful audience who made up the uh, questions that were excellent tonight, and the wonderful accommodations of the CNN Center and all the people here. The format, there are still issues.